Hi, I'm Jason Norris, and this is episode 14 of Podcast Local from On The Go FM. Have you ever faced an ethical dilemma with your podcast? Maybe it was an editing choice you weren't sure about making, or whether you should tell a particular story, or maybe it was about how to tell a story. I faced one of those decisions several years ago, and I faced another in sharing that story on this episode. Wait, that sounds way more serious than I intended. I don't want to build it up too much, but it was an important choice, and it taught me something. And I want to share that with you because I know if you have not faced an ethical dilemma, you will. This is Podcast Local, a show about telling the stories of your community, that place where you live, that place where people know you personally. And this episode is about ethical local podcasting. It's actually the first part in a mini-series on ethics. And I'd like to make this interactive. I'd like to hear about an ethical choice you had to face and what you did about it. More on all of that at the end of this episode. Support for Podcast Local comes from the Satchel Podcast Player. It's a podcast app that helps you find podcasts produced near you. Find out more at satchelplayer.com. If you remember back in episode 12, I talked with Butler Kane about journalism. And even though not all local podcasts are about local news, he did mention something that I think is worth looking at. If you're wanting to do journalism, go to the uh, SPJ, Society of Professional Journalists, Code of Ethics, which is considered a standard in the industry. Go to the RTDNA, Radio, Television, Digital News Association. See what their codes of ethics are. Uh, look at other codes of ethics um, for photojournalism, things like that. If you're going to be doing journalism, then do journalism and adhere to those standards. Again, we're not all doing journalism, but we are dealing with information, with facts and telling real stories of real people and places and things in our community. And we use audio, sometimes video, to tell these stories. And there is a code of ethics for telling stories with those media. The RTDNA, which is Radio, Television, Digital News Association, the RTDNA includes guidelines for ethical audio and video editing. Their code of ethics says, Professional electronic journalists should not manipulate images or sounds in any way that is misleading. That sounds fair, doesn't it? And maybe it sounds obvious, too. But it also brings up a question. What is misleading? Let's explore this question with a story. In 2003, in the time before podcasts, I was in a video documentary class at the University of Alabama. The coolest part of the class is that we got to make our own documentary. My team started brainstorming ideas, and finally someone mentioned a story I had never heard before. There was this old building nearby that was haunted. Well, at least that was the rumor. Turns out this place had a tremendous attraction to college students. Older students often took freshmen out there to scare them. And when those students got older, they initiated a whole new group of freshmen. And this had been going on for a long, long time. So we decided to look into this. The first half of our documentary was the student stories. We interviewed a group who had been to Old Bryce. That's what they called it. Bryce was a hospital that treated people diagnosed with mental illness. Old Bryce was the first hospital built before they moved it next to the campus of the University of Alabama. Well, actually, that part of the story is not true. That was part of the rural legend, something we explained in the second half of that documentary. But the first half of the documentary was the interviews with this group of students who had visited Old Bryce. That's the part of the story where I faced an ethical dilemma. Now, before I tell you the choice, I want you to hear the story. Right when we pulled up, I mean, the building is just, it's just freaky. I mean, right when you pull up, I mean, it's just huge. It, it looks like something out of a movie. Old, run down. It was very menacing to see it at the first time. It does have this real 
mentality of an old, like, very haunted mental institute. There's nothing around it. It's just trees and um, woods, and the building itself is really um, broken down and looks pretty bad. We pulled around, and we all got out of our cars. We started walking around, and um, we got up to the, and I was, you know, I'm a girl. I was getting kind of scared, and um, so we, we, we walk up to this door we found, like, down, um, down around to the side or whatever, and there's this big door, and um, it just said hell, spray painted in black across it. And right there, I was kind of like, I don't know about this. Once you get in that kind of situation, all those haunting stories that you've heard about start going through your head. And it was pretty scary, you know, just because like everybody was like, you know, there's homeless people in there. So that's what kind of freaked me out the most at first before we even went in there. The boys, you know, oh, well, let's go in, you know, being tough, and they opened up the door, and I think I got maybe two steps past the threshold, and I looked around at all the walls, and they were just padded, and it just freaked me out, and I couldn't go any further. And so all the girls, we screamed, and we ran back out, but the boys had flashlights, and they went in, and so we all came outside and watched them run around all upstairs with flashlights. We could see them through the halls. Very creepy, and all, like, they have old cots and all the bars on the windows. Definitely very scary. You know, you start looking around and there's all these doors to the side and you're going down a dark hallway. You, you know, the thought runs through your mind. A little leery. We went to where there's like a cafeteria and we, we just kind of got a little freaked out. Didn't have a good vibe from it. They told us that in the building, all that they had seen um, was graffiti on the walls and I think they had seen some beds and stuff like that, but it just basically was really trashed and run down like it was on the outside, it was the same way on the inside. There's all kinds of stuff like still in there, like couches and uh, we found like old cards and you know, like mask like from like a drugstore that you buy during Halloween, which we had no idea why they were in there. One of the guys that uh, is in the, the group with us is kind of being rather noisy. He's, I guess, pretty scared, you would say. My biggest fear was um, cop showing up. They'll, they'll give them a warning or, or they'll be like, you know, we're going to throw you in jail. I figured with, you know, them, some of those guys being loud, that was a good possibility that people uh, over at the SD Allen facility next door would possibly hear us and uh, either call the police or if the police did decide to drive by and stop, they may hear us inside, see the flashlight. Then the police came, and um, the boys were still upstairs on the third floor running around, and um, one officer went inside to get the boys, and then the other two said that they weren't going to go in there. I didn't actually get to talk to the police officers, but I know some of my friends did. And um, so when they got back, they told us that the police officer had stopped them and had basically asked them what they were doing out at Rice that it was private property and that they were basically trespassing. They freaked out when they saw that we, we were trespassing there. Really? I mean, oh yeah. It was, it was pretty strange. I don't know, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. You know, I mean, it's old Bryce. You know, no one's there. I mean, it's an abandoned building, but they certainly were angry with us. They'll just try and scare you, you know, and get your information off your driver's license and say, you know, if you come back out here, you know, we got all this on file. And, come out here, we're going to arrest you for trespassing on state property. I think they kind of dismissed it as kids being kids, and they let them go, but they gave them a um, strict warning to not do that again because it was against the law. So there's the story. A group of college kids visit Old Bryce, get scared, and some of them get caught by the police. My ethical dilemma was how I edited the story. In fact, the story I just played was not the story we actually told in the final edit. More on that after this. Back when I worked for public radio, we used to do fun drives and ask listeners to support the shows that we offered them. Now, most of the programs cost money, and some of them were very expensive. But one of the problems with fun drives was the interruption of the pledge breaks, We'll get back to our regular programming after we beg you for a donation. One day, I remember our station manager coming in and telling us not to refer to those breaks as, well, breaks. In fact, don't apologize for them. These things were part of the show, an important, integral part of the show. Without the pledge breaks, without support from underwriters or sponsors, we could not do 
the show. That's the way I would like to think about anyone who supports Podcast Local. Sponsors help make the show a reality, whether that's individual listeners like you or the podcast app builders like Satchel. Every dollar helps to pay for the expenses of podcasting. The Satchel podcast player has been a part of Podcast Local since episode one. They know the importance of local podcasts, and they saw the importance of a podcast that shines a spotlight on local podcasts and podcasters. With their podcast player, listeners can easily search for podcasts produced nearby. They can find shows that are about their local community. They can find neighbors who are creating audio stories, entertainment, and educational resources. It's a win-win for producers and listeners. You can put your show on their map for free at satchelplayer.com. And you can also discover the other cool features the Satchel team's building, like easy ways for listeners to donate to your show. Find out more at satchelplayer.com. Okay, so that story you just heard about the college kids going to an old abandoned building made it seem like the students were all part of this one group. They were not. It's probable that none of the students you just heard even knew each other. After we had collected these stories, I was advised by someone who was experienced in the making of documentaries that we should edit the story to make them seem like they were all part of one group. It was supposed to make the story a more powerful story. But that advice bothered me. They were not part of one group. They did not know each other. They did not visit Old Bryce at the same time. What would each of them think if they watched the story only to find out that they were simply made into characters in a fictional documentary? I also thought that documentaries were supposed to present the truth. Even if they were biased, they were supposed to present an understanding of the truth, at least from that one perspective. Turns out documentaries are not simply documenting the truth. In fact, doing that would be a form of journalism. But documentaries are usually not journalism. And documentarians, apparently, do not have to or feel the need to adhere to those codes of ethics that we've been talking about, like the SPJ and the RTDNA. The RTDNA says you should not manipulate images or sounds in any way that is misleading. To me, if I had produced the documentary about a local allegedly haunted building in the way that you just heard it, that would be manipulating sounds in a way that is misleading. Now, in a moment, I want to play a piece of audio that I included to make sure it was not misleading. But before that, I want to tell you about another behind-the-scenes look into documentaries recently explored on 99% Invisible. Have you heard this? In episode 256 entitled Sounds Natural, they explored the world of nature documentaries. I will not give you any spoilers right now. I would like you to actually listen to the episode first, because frankly, I think it might shock you. It did me. These nature documentaries are presenting a truth about animals, but their methods certainly do not adhere to journalistic codes of ethics. And of course, many would argue that documentaries are not intended to be journalistic. They could be outright propaganda. They could be manipulative, trying to persuade you to take action in some way. Even so, is it right to fake the elements of the story? Is it okay to fake the facts in order to tell the truth? Is it okay to present something on screen or by audio that is not actually true? Those are the questions I want us to explore and consider as we tell the stories of our communities. So check out 99% Invisible, listen to episode 256, Sounds Natural. And when we talk about this in future episodes, I will then provide spoiler-level details about that episode. Meanwhile, back to old Bryce. 
Telling a story about one group that went to Old Bryce might have been interesting if that had been true. Since it was not, I decided to edit it differently. I included this in order to make it very clear that each story was about different groups that went to Old Bryce. So about five of us, including myself, drive out uh, to Old Bryce. It was a group, I mean, there must have been 15 of us. I mean, maybe even 20 of us. We had about three other guys that went with us. There was probably about seven cars full, so I'd say at least 25 to 30 people. It was a, it was a rather large group that went out there that night. You know, I actually like that version better because it also showed how big a draw that old building was. It was not just one group that went out there. It was group after group after group. I also liked it better because it was the truth. Now, the purpose of this episode is to start the exploration of ethics in podcasting, especially local podcasting. How would the people in your community react if they knew how you went about creating a story about a local place or local people? After listening to 99% Invisible about those nature documentaries, how would your listeners feel if you did the same thing with your stories? So, do you agree with me? Or do you think I made too much of this so-called ethical dilemma? I really want to know. Contact me at podcastlocal.com. Share your own stories through writing or even audio. You could even attach an MP3 of your perspective and email it to me. Have you faced an ethical dilemma of your own? Share that with me if you can. I would like to include your story on a future ethics-related episode. And I look forward to hearing from you. I'm Jason Norris. Thank you for listening to Podcast Local from On The Go FM. Go FM.